Good morning everybody, welcome to Carmen's Australian Storytime. This morning I am going to read An Enemy is Not the Enemy. What's an anemone? An anemone is a little tiny sea creature and they're usually quite colourful. Now I'm on the beach but I don't think I have any anemones on this beach. Let's see what the blurb has to say and guess what? It is that time of year again. It is the CBCA Children's Book Council Awards and this is one of the shortlist books. Let's see what the blurb tells us. I'm trying to make friends, not enemies. So why do I always sting everyone? An enemy lives alone in the rock pool. The tide comes in and the tide goes out. All an enemy wants is a friend, but friends are hard to make when you accidentally sting everyone who comes near you. Perhaps clownfish has a solution to the problem. Can you think of a solution to the problem? Let's find out. Love the drawings. This book was written and illustrated by Anna McGregor. See what you think of this because it's a short list book. I'm so lonely. I hate being stuck here with the boring barnacles. <gasps> There's that B word, anyone who knows me. I do not like that word. He's very pink, isn't he? High tide. Oh look, some new friends. <laughs> Sorry, it's a bit windy. Oh no, it's an enemy. Whatever you do, don't get too close. Why? Oh dear. Hi guys, what's happening out there? Don't ask. They don't want to go near him. They don't want to get stung. I bet you've seen some cool things. Pirates. Mermaids, Kraken, tell me everything. Hello? This is making me nervous. Oh, I don't want to get too close. Low tide. Uh-oh. They're getting closer and closer. Sting. Ouch. What a great page. I love this page. And it's a ing sound, isn't it? Sting and a st sting. As soon as the tide comes in, we're out of here. Sorry, I can't help it. We didn't mean to sting them. I'm trying to make friends, not enemies. So why do I always sting everyone? I did it to the seahorse. I did it to the starfish. I even stung the sea cucumber. What a pickle that was. <laughs> it's no wonder everyone avoids me. Poor an enemy. Have you thought of a solution yet? I'd rather take my chances out there. Good luck, clowny. Oh no, here comes the clownfish in the high tide. Hi, nice hair. Not hair, but thanks. This rock pool is great. It is? Oh, he's a very nice clownfish, isn't he? King tide. Uh-oh. An enemy, I'm coming in, but I'll... Oh, it's an even bigger tide. A king tide is when the tide comes up really high. Sting. Oh, there's a big octopus. And I think the clownfish is hiding from the octopus. Wow, I didn't sting you. We're actually good together. Finally, I've got a friend. But I suppose you'll be going back to the big, exciting ocean. Nah, we've got a good thing going here. A clown 
fish has decided to stay. They like to hide in amongst the hair of the anemone <laughs> or the stingers. The ocean. Believe me. Ah all the other animals have to run around and hide from all the big predators. Predators are those big animals that go after the smaller animals like the swordfish and the octopus and the shark and the eel and the stingray and the crab. I think he does have a good thing going there in that little rock pool where he's nice and safe with an enemy. Sounds like a good friendship to me. Now here's some fun facts. Did you know Clownfish and sea anemones have a special relationship. Clownfish are immune to sea anemones' poisonous tentacles, and these provide the fish with protection from predators. In return, clownfish clean sea anemones by eating algae and other food scraps off them. The scientific name for two species helping one another is symbiosis. That's a tricky word, isn't it? Hermit crabs don't grow their own protective shells like other crabs. Instead, they must use a discarded sea snail shell for protection from predators. As a hermit crab body grows, it must upgrade to a larger shell. Tides are the rise and fall of oceans, caused mainly by the moon's gravitational pull on the earth. I don't know if you noticed, but there was a hermit crab going in and out of shells all the way through this book. See if you can go back through and notice this hermit crab at the top of the page. Now every time I find a shell on the beach, I always check to make sure that it's empty. And if it's something that could be a home for a sea animal, I always throw it back into the deeper water to give it back to the ocean for those animals. Because hermit crabs sometimes run out of homes because we're always picking up shells. Thank you for joining me on Carmen's Australian Storytime. Don't forget to click and subscribe and tell me what you think about this book. I think it's a great one for the shortlist and I love the pictures in this book. Alright, I'll see you next time. Bye.